Well, I'd already uh, pruned on this peach tree and uh, got the ladder and pruned the top out. This is an old tree. You want to leave a good spacing between any fruiting part of your tree. So you cut. If your spacing is there and you have a branch hanging down here, it's better to cut that one out to get the spacing because the ones that come out of the bottom like that one generally don't produce the best fruit. But sometimes you have to have it because you don't have any others on the on the run. But I have uh, gotten up there and you can see that I did a video the other day that, that these were a lot closer and that one was crossing so I just when we had fig tree problems last year from a very harsh winter and uh, you know 80 some degrees to way below freezing in one day uh, these were some roots I dug up on one of the trees and I put them in these buckets and I kept them in the green earth all year long and they actually had a tray laying across them and the other day I opened up the, took the tray off and they were sprouting so I brought them out here and they get some sun and you can see they're growing and I can just take this whole mass and just plant it back into the ground and I will get two fig trees out of it for no cost. Now here's our Rome apple tree. It's time to prune it out. You can see the buds are just starting to open up and what you want to do is keep your center open and see these were cuts made in previous years and these were dormant buds that showed up and I don't need that and that one's growing toward the center but the center is basically open now I don't want to lose that because it's a fruiting whoops don't want to lose that because that's a fruiting spur and this has a lot of spurs on it and this is a little in the way but We've learned to live with it. So pretty much it's open through the middle. And then on these branches here, well, we finished uh, doing this. It's all pruned back. Everything's cut to a outward facing bud that we topped off the top. Uh, we did top one major branch right there that we didn't catch last year. I didn't would be the operative world forward and you get rid of all the dead diseased and damaged items this was some spurs they could have grown this year but see that's on a damaged piece of wood and it might as well come out of here rather than it get bigger and you have to take it out next year and anything that's vertical because they won't grow on vertical branches i have some verticals over there once they get a little flowers on them and they'll pull over and that's pretty much it. They're opening up. I do have a little crossing issue here. But I don't have but so many uh, fruiting spurs on this tree. And they're most at the bottom. And the reason I cut those back is so these branches can come out and form replacement spurs for these. Because even though they last for nine years, eventually they die back like that's one I haven't cut off but that might be trying to put out one you can see the sunny side of the tree is starting to come out and blossom a little bit stronger than the shadow side of the tree well this is alcohol 50% water 50% alcohol it's just a little in a bottle and you should spray your these are the best spray bottles that I found to use. I got these at Lowe's. Not to give them a plug, but they are great bottles. And it's time to cut these uh, grapevines back. They're starting to swell. Although we did get some black rot on them. And you need to spray your pruning shears. If you're on a tree that's got any disease whatsoever, you should spray them like every cut. If you have healthy trees and you go to another tree, you should minimum spray it between different trees or different plants that need trees and vines that need pruning because if I did this and it has disease on it that the apple tree over there is susceptible to and I didn't spray with alcohol 
And I use alcohol and water rather than bleach and water because bleach is more caustic to metal tools and it's also uh, will stain your clothes. I wear Levi's and I'd have all these white splotches where the bleach water hit. And alcohol will do it. Uh, some people say 70 uh, percent to 30 and I think 50 50 is will do now I got to cut all this back and leave a couple cans been trying to get this hoodell on video for a long time resident hoodell he's been here for a long time and it's a pair of them He's in that magnolia across the street, but I can't see him. They're big birds. If I get any closer, I think he'd shut up. Would be nice if I got closer to him and he flew off and I got him on video. There's a... There's a a creek behind, down in the bottom there. You can see some houses way off in the distance. There is a creek down there. All I got him to do is shut up. There's a good chance we're going to lose these grapes to that uh, black rot disease. Uh, this, we've got enough. I'm going to wait till they open up a little more before I cut them back to uh, uh, 10 buds each. And this one here only, uh, there's... This has a split trunk, and this one comes up here and has that cane and that piece of cane down there. And this piece here comes up and comes back this way. And that's about the only way I can do this. I might bring this over and tie it up to the line. It'd be a miracle if it produces. And uh, I can see the bark is starting to split, but that's not uncommon on a grape. So anyway, it's done. The apple tree's done. And across there, I finished the peach tree and that crate myrtle. I cut all the low branches off so you can see through it. And I cut anything that was interfering with the peach tree out. And that is what I got off of. Uh, I got a whole trash can off of the crate myrtle and the peach tree. And I got some of that in this trash can plus what was on the grapevines and the apple tree.